So, the best judo throws that land you in a great position for BJJ. The real question has to be, are you a top player or are you a bottom player? Because there are judo throws that can do both. Okay, so I'm gonna give you one for each. The first one is gonna be a basic uchimata into an ankle pick, okay? The big misconception with judo throws is as you get better and better in skill, the more effort you need to put into the throw. So when you really want to throw somebody, it's going to take everything you have. Because remember, that's 180 pounds, 200 pounds for me. That's going to be fighting through the air, giving it everything they got to not land on their back. They're going to be holding you. Their legs are going to be flicking around. So when you score, you're going to have to land on top of them. You're going to have to roll over. The idea that you're just going to lift somebody up into the air, take them off your back, throw them down, and then land on top, that usually happens with inexperienced players or there's a skill gap, right? Like I can go into any BJJ gym, find a jiu-jitsu guy, and then do a perfect Uchimata, stay on my feet, come back out, and then hit an arm bar. But if you've ever seen a judo match, that doesn't happen because the level of skill is so much higher than the stand-up. It has nothing to do with their ability to transition or get onto the ground, but it's just like in wrestling where the idea of hitting a blast double where you can throw the person through the air and then land in your pin doesn't really exist. It happens sometimes, but it's so rare that it's not really worth talking about, okay? So when we're talking about judo throws, we wanna work within reality. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a basic uchimata into a basic foot sweep, into an ankle pick that can lead into your leg drags, your straight ankles, or just being able to maintain pressure so that you can stay on top and get your two points, okay? So the grips aren't really that important. Um, I like to start off with a nice square stance for my partner, just for learning purposes. I'm gonna go sleeve, he's gonna go sleeve. I'm gonna have him go collar, because what I really wanna practice is my ability to open the jacket as wide as I can, okay? So foot goes to the top of the triangle, and I back step, and I go wide as I can. I want them wide, open up your arms wide. Nope, bend your arms, there you go, and flex. There you go. That way when they're wide, I can direct his body to turn him without a lot of force. I don't want him in close, now flex everything, where I can't really do much because his core is gonna be strong, okay? So while we're in this position and he's here, I wanna think back step and open. Back step and open. That way I can lift that leg nice and easy. And that's my only goal. I just want to get that leg into the air, okay? I'm not trying to get hip contact. I'm not trying to blast him into the air. I just want to back step and get that leg up. Once that leg is up into the air, now I'm going to act like I'm doing my foot sweep. I'm just going to take that leg and step behind. Notice that his legs naturally got crossed. That's the cue that you're doing it right. Okay? I'm not making a lot of contact with my partner. I'm just putting my body in a good solid position. Back step. Open him up. Open up that leg. Get him standing on one leg. Step behind. Boom. Get those legs to cross. Now, my hand can go pick up that ankle. Bring him down. And if you want, you can drag. If you want, you can sit for the straight ankle. If you want, you can just hang out here. Let's come back up. Okay, so here we go. From this angle here, just so that we can see it, right? Boom, back step, open him up. Get that leg up, step through, drop it, pull it, pass it, close everything off. Figure out what you wanna be doing from this position, okay? That'll be the first one, the nice, simple, like I wanna play top position that you can do. Just as a bonus tip here, if you want, you can always just grab that hand, push, and then get it. You don't even need to do the Uchimata. I like to do it because I feel like it's a safer position. It helps open up in case he's pushing me really hard. He's pushing me really hard. I can't get there. This allows me to open him, get close by hooking that leg, then come in. Okay? So there's actually two there for you with the same outcome. Now, let's look at the other player that wants to play top, but also has a good guard, right? I always prefer to play on bottom when I'm doing BJJ. So this would be my technique to back up a little bit. He's gonna post down lefty for me. 
He's gonna post too much leg. Too much leg. There we go. Okay. He's got a good solid post, right? He's pushing you away. Or you can't get there. He might even have double collars, right? See this a lot in the masters division where guys are like, can't get there, right? That looks like you know masters to heavyweight. So when we feel that, I'm gonna. It works even from here, but I want you to be able to see the hand. So we're just gonna have him let go. Okay. I'm just gonna come across and I'm gonna grab on the bottom of the jacket, okay? He's gonna keep that good solid post and I wanna sneak this hand in here behind his neck. And notice that I'm rolling thumb down on the gi jacket, okay? Thumb down and I get in. Now, I'm gonna shuffle one time, okay? If you have to shuffle twice or three times, do that, it's okay. Don't stand so there you go, perfect. I'm gonna shuffle to his forward, okay? Stand square? No, square, let's use the mats. That way they have a good visual, we're gonna use the mats. His forward would be this way, okay? If he changes that stance a little bit, his forward is now this direction. It's off at the angle, okay? It's important to make sure that you slide in his forward angle so that when I'm sliding, I'm going along, pulling him to his off balance. If you slide where I'm going along this tatami line right here, brace yourself with that leg, brace yourself with that leg, there. See, he has that balance and you're not gonna be able to do much. So you wanna lead into the off balance point with a triangle would be. There, see, and I'm sliding at the angle, okay? The angle is probably the most important part here. Once you find it, this throw is super easy. But we're gonna be here. I'm gonna slide once to get him to move. Foot comes inside. Goes from the outside, comes inside. And then I sit, crisscross applesauce. One, two. As I'm coming down, my foot's coming to that inside position and I have his forearm across my ribs so that when I push off my bottom leg, I can throw them up and over. And it's IBJJF legal because the head's not coming down to the floor. It's actually staying in front, protected by your body, okay? So same thing, we're here, inside position. I pull that by, we shuffle, boom. Bring him up and over, and we're here. Let's do it again, this time with some resistance. Don't get thrown this time. I mean it, don't get thrown, it's important. Because you want to be able to practice this with resistance. Because even if it doesn't work, which is why I like this throw as a guard player, you're in a good position. So, he's going to give some resistance here. Perfect. Look at that. Now I can go to hips, and look how extended my partner is. Inside position, we can set that up nice and easy. I can use my leg, because he only has one arm free. And because you hear that with the legs, that means his feet are heavy, which means he doesn't have a lot of mobility. So when I'm in this position, boom, inside, there, there's one hook, there's distance, right? If we want, we can climb, we can get to the arm, we can do a lot of different things. But you're in a good, safe position. It's almost like a safe guard pull that could potentially be a takedown. So those would be my two options, plus the bonus tip for you guys that are looking to use your judo skills into BJJ.